Good afternoon. My name is Akshara Suresh. I wanted to bring recognition to this month marking the 40th anniversary since the anti-Tamil pogrom in Sri Lanka. Over 40 decades ago, the Sri Lankan government enabled the abetted anti-Tamil pogrom with the explicit aim of targeting and attacking Tamil families and businesses. The consequences of these tragic events were far-reaching, sparking a prolonged armed conflict that endured for over 26 years. It ended with the devastating events in Mullivaikal on May 18, 2009. Last year, the Parliament of Canada recognized these events as genocide, underlining the severity of the atrocities committed. The Government of Canada at the time took steps to support Tamils in Sri Lanka through the implementation of a special measures program that enabled over 1,800 Tamils to settle here. This community has now grown to over 300,000 people from coast to coast to coast. Today, Tamils have, been, have become an integral part of Canadian society, contributing to all aspects of our national fabric. As we commemorate the significant anniversary, we must renew our commitment to address the ongoing challenges faced by Tamil people. Today, we are joined by family members of survivors and members of the Tamil community. This includes Sarajan Kanabadi Pillai, whose parents survived Black July, Gary Ananda Sangari, Member of Parliament for Scarborough Rouge Park, Sarika Navanathan, the Development Officer at People for Relief and Equality in Lanka, and Vinoth Navaji Vananda, Executive Director at Quebec Tamil Community Center. Hi, my name is Sarujin Kana Padi Pillai. Um, both my parents are survivors of Black July 83 uh, program in Sri Lanka. They were both born in, um, in the northern part of the country and moved to Colombo for, um, for economic reasons and to build out a, a family and life there. They lived amongst a multicultural um, community where it was Tamils, uh, Muslims, and uh, Sinhalese um, people. And um, that day, both of them were at work, um, and they had a one-year-old child at uh, home, uh, my brother, um, at the time. Um, while they were at work, uh, they had uh, heard about um, the situation unfolding uh, where there were Tamil people um, identified um, uh, and uh, killed, um, businesses looted. And um, he got a call from our uh, neighbors at the time um, indicating that they had seen um, a boy in his teenage years and his father, um, who were our, uh, my parents' neighbors, um, being hacked to death with um, their heads cut off and to, to be made a statement of. And uh, um, of course, my father was uh, very scared uh, with a one-year-old um, in the neighboring house, uh, but was advised not to, to go back. Um, and so during that day, he had, uh, um, with the help of others uh, at um, his workplace um, who uh, some were Sinhalese, some were Tamil, um, had come up with um, a, a plan in, a, um, in taking a van uh, to um, the house that my brother was in um, to get him out of the house. Um, and it was important that they, um, the, the people that went were not Tamil, because on the streets there were uh, thugs who were stopping um, cars and buses that went one by one to identify these people that were in uh, the vehicles were Tamil um, to, to bring them out and, and hack them on the streets. And fortunately, they were able to get my br uh, brother to my dad and uh, together um, they went to get my mom. Um, both my parents, um, uh, my mom was, um, uh, there were people that helped her put on a hijab to, and so she pretended uh, to be Muslim. And um, while they were driving, many times they were stopped. And because my parents knew Sinhalese well, they were um, let go of, and in some cases, people thought they were Muslim. Um, and this is what my parents had to do. And they had the privilege of looking in a, in a, in a way that, um, allowed these thugs to believe that they were potentially not Tamil, and, and that's the reason why they survived. And they had the privilege of having um, others around them that w uh, were Sinhalese as well that supported them and uh, 
thousands of people who didn't have that privilege or didn't, you know, look to Tamil um, were killed uh, on that day, and and that set off an exodus of Tamil people leaving uh, the country, and uh, which is why my family um, and I made our way to Canada. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you, Sarah, for for sharing that, and uh, uh, on this 40th anniversary of uh, what we call Black July. Um, the days uh, starting on the 24th of July 1983 and lasting about a week where uh, three, over 3,000 Tamils were killed, uh, millions of rupees of Tamil businesses destroyed, and over a million people displaced uh, as a result. Uh, I want to first and foremost pay my respect to those uh, who died and, of course, um, remember the resilience of those who survived. Uh, at that time, the government of Canada um, initiated what's called a special measures program that enabled uh, close to 1,880 Tamils to settle in Canada. Uh, that, of course, uh, was one of the major reasons why Canada now has over 300,000 Tamils from coast to coast to coast. This past weekend, the Prime Minister uh, was able to meet with survivors and their families uh, and hear firsthand the uh, experiences of Tamils who went through Black July, the heroic uh, escape, uh, the difficult journey by cargo ship, the days spent at refugee camps, uh, and then ultimately uh, their uh, departure and welcome in Canada. Of course, this community has grown uh, in many ways and it's had its difficulties here. Uh, but as a member of this uh, community, I can say that we are very grateful uh, for what Canada has done. But at the same time, we recognize the enormous uh, responsibility we have uh, as Canadians to ensure that uh, those who are seeking safety and freedom will always have Canada as a place uh, and a beacon of hope. The sad reality on Sri Lanka is that since 1983, impunity has prevailed. Uh, not a single person responsible for the atrocities uh, have ever been held to account. In fact, the government gave electoral list to thugs and mobs uh, in order uh, for them to be able to identify Tamil households, yet nobody has been held to account. The current president was at that time a minister uh, in the presidential uh, administration of uh, Gia Wardna, uh, and sadly he too has evaded his responsibility. Uh, for the last several months I have, through uh, Canada's uh, mission from Sri Lanka, uh, encouraged the president to offer an unequivocal apology uh, for what happened and take responsibility for his failure and the failure of his government and successive governments to hold anyone to account. Regrettably, this has not come forward and in fact the foreign minister very recently has cited um, uh, that uh, it was uh, in part um, has blamed the Tamils who are in fact the victims in this case uh, of uh, initiating uh, this. So it is very sad and regrettable that the government of Sri Lanka has not moved forward um, in this way. We will continue to seek accountability for crimes committed on the island by all parties, uh, and we want impunity to end. So in this regard, um, I'm looking forward to the um, report of the uh, United Nations High Commission for Human Rights, uh, who's mandated to offer a pathway towards accountability, further accountability uh, for crimes committed. And uh, I will work, continu continuously work with Tamil civil society uh, and civil society organizations across the board, in including international uh, non-governmental organizations, the United Nations Human Rights Council, as well as our government to ensure that we advance the issue of accountability. Um, on a final note, uh, I do uh, think that this is a very important time, uh, and I invite all Canadians to uh, embrace your neighbors, your Tamil neighbors, and talk to them. Talk to them about their painful stories, uh, whether it was in 83 or in uh, 2009. Understand their plight um, and let us understand each other in the spirit of, neighbor, uh, uh, of being good neighbors uh, and to support each other in this very difficult time. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sarika, and thank you for inviting People for Equality and Relief in Lanka 
otherwise known as Pearl, to speak today as we commemorate 40 years since the anti-Tamil pogroms of Black July. Pearl is a human rights organization committed to justice, accountability, and self-determination for the Tamil people in the northeast of Sri Lanka. The week of July 23rd, 1983 was marked with horrific acts of violence, destruction, and harm brought on by state-backed Sinhala mobs against Tamil people. 3,000 Tamils were killed, 5,000 Tamil businesses and 18,000 Tamil homes were destroyed, thousands upon thousands of Tamil people across the country were affected, and these events triggered the largest exodus of Tamil people from their homeland. Many Tamil Canadians have experienced this violence firsthand and still carry the trauma of these harrowing experiences with them. Black July was not an isolated incident but rather was a part of the systematic, intentional, racist project of Singhala Buddhist supremacy, which is entrenched at every level of the Sri Lankan state. This supremacist ideology led to the commission of multiple atrocities against Tamil people, such as Black July and the 2009 Mulivaika massacre, which was officially recognized as a genocide by the Canadian government. Singhala Buddhist supremacy also shapes current day policies in the homeland, which has led to state-sponsored land grabs in Tamil lands, the destruction and Buddhistization of religious sites, the heavy military occupation of the Northeast, anti-terrorism laws that, dispor that disproportionately impact Tamils and Muslims, and the empowered executive presidency that has explicitly stated that Buddhism will continue to hold the foremost place in Sri Lanka's constitution. As we mark 40 years since Black July, we have yet to see any meaningful form of accountability for the atrocities committed in 1983 and onwards. Due to Sri Lanka's ongoing culture of impunity and lack of political will for justice and accountability. Accused officials have maintained political and military power and continue to engage in violence against Tamil people. Many truth-telling mechanisms, such as truth commissions and commissions of inquiry, have been established by the Sri Lankan government in the past few decades to investigate and address past atrocities committed against the Tamil people. These commissions have allowed for the Sri Lankan government to maintain a facade of transitional justice without delivering answers or any form of justice to the Tamil community. Despite the failures of these past commissions and the Tamil victim survivors community's ongoing calls for an international independent mechanism for justice and accountability, Sri Lanka will be establishing yet another state-led truth and reconciliation commission. The cycle of impunity needs to be broken. And Sri Lanka has shown time and time again that it has no political will to do so. Therefore, a stronger international push is needed to pave the way for lasting peace and justice. The international community must heed the Tamil victims' call for an international independent mechanism for justice and accountability to ensure meaningful transitional justice processes and address the long causes of the conflict, including the need for a long-term political solution for Tamils through the right of self-determination. At the heart of Pearl's work lies a resolute com commitment to accountability. We're committed to amplifying Tamil voices of those on the ground who have expressed time and time again that the Sri Lankan government cannot be trusted to answer for the atrocities that they themselves have committed. We also pay homage to the Tamil victim survivor communities in the Northeast who continue their fight for justice and accountability. International advocacy both through the UN and through countries like Canada plays an essential role in combating the Sri Lankan state's efforts to erase its past and hinder efforts for justice and accountability for its crimes. We appreciate Canada's endeavors in applying pressure for accountability, such as the recent targeted sanctions against government officials, including Mahinda and Gotabaya Rajabaksa. We will continue advocating for robust international mechanisms that can overcome the lack of political will for justice and accountability in Sri Lanka. Although the Tamil community has been and will always be shaped by its resistance and resilience in the face of injustice, the deep wounds from Black July are still felt across the community. This week, as we mourn, we ask that Canada continues to stand in solidarity with the Tamil community in our struggle for justice, accountability, and self-determination. Thank you. Today, we gather here to commemorate the 40th anniversary of an event that has left an indelible mark on the Tamil community and serves as a stark reminder of the atrocities com committed against them. We remember the tragic events of Black July, which occurred in 1983 
and reflect on its long-standing impact on the Tamil community and the broader lessons it holds for all of humanity. Black July led to an influx of Tamil asylum seekers looking to escape the genocide perpetrated by the Sri Lankan state. Aujourd'hui, des dizaines de milliers de Tamouls appelaient le Québec leur foyer. Le Centre communautaire Tamoul de Québec est une organisation à un non but lucratif dédié au soutien, au développement et la croissance de ses membres, ainsi d'avancer les institutions sociales, culturelles et éducatives au sein de la communauté. La vision du centre est de créer un espace ouvert où les membres de la communauté peuvent s'unir, guérir, collaborer et grandir. Black July marked a dark chapter in history, a time when violence, hatred, and discrimination were unleashed against the Tamil people. A wave of anti-Tamil riots led to the massacre of thousands of innocent Tamil civilians. During that time, Sri Lankan President J.R.J. Awardena is infamously quoted as saying, the more you put pressure in the North, the happier the Sinhala people will be. Really, if I starve the Tamils out, the Sinhala people will be happy. The mobs targeted and located Tamils using voter registration lists, damning evidence of the implication of the government. Cette violence, soutenue par l'État, a entraîné une destruction généralisée des foyers, des entreprises et des moyens de subsistance des Tamouls, laissant donnant innombrables familles déchirées et marquées à vie. Pendant plus de sept jours, le nombre estimé des décès dépasse le 3 000. Plus de 8 000 foyers et 5 000 commerces ont été détruits, et plus de 150 000 Tamouls se, se sont retrouvés sans abri. Pour la communauté tamoule, le juillet noir n'est pas simplement un incident isolé de violence. Il représente l'aboutissement de décennies de marginalisation et de discrimination. L'oppression systématique subie par les Tamouls au Sri Lanka couvée depuis des décennies. Mais le juillet noir est devenu un tournant révélant l'ampleur des souffrances humaines endurées par le peuple tamoul. À ce jour, aucun responsable gouvernemental, politique ou civil n'a été tenu responsable pour des crimes commis malgré les preuves claires et les témoignages. It is crucial that we understand the significance of Black July to the Tamil community. This event serves as a poignant reminder of the need to safeguard human rights and the consequences of turning a blind eye to injustice. As we stand here today, we must acknowledge the resilience of the survivors and their families who have had to endure unimaginable pain and loss. Their stories bear witness to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unspeakable horrors. Soyons clairs, le juillet noir n'était pas un incident isolé. C'était un génocide commis contre le peuple tamoul qui a, passé, qui a posé le base de massacre de Muli en 2009 où des dizaines de milliers de Tamouls ont été systématiquement ciblés et tués. Alors que nous rendons hommage aux victimes, nous devons également souligner l'importance de reconnaître les atrocités historiques et veiller à ce que de tels événements ne soient jamais oubliés. The Tamil nation on the island of Sri Lanka continues to face discrimination, systematic colonization, cultural and structural genocide even today. This anniversary serves as a solemn call for us to stand together, not only in solidarity with the Tamil people, but in unity against all forms of discrimination and violence. To secure a better future, it is imperative that we persistently advocate for justice, accountability, and the reconciliation for the Tamils of Sri Lanka, barring which history is doomed to repeat itself. As we remember the 40th anniversary of Black July, let us not merely dwell on the pain and the suffering of the past, but also focus on building a brighter future, a future where every community, regardless of their ethnicity, religion, or culture, can live in harmony and peace. Unissons-nous aujourd'hui pour honorer les survivants de Juillet Noir et la communauté tamoul dans son ensemble. Profitons de cette occasion pour réaffirmer notre engagement envers le droit de l'homme la justice et l'égalité pour tous. En nous souvenant de la pa du passé et en apprenant de lui, nous pouvons aspirer à un monde où de telles tragédies restent confinées dans les livres d'histoire. 
et où l'humanité prospère dans l'unité et la compassion. Merci. So if you're online and you have any questions, please use the raise hand function to notify us of your questions. Si vous êtes en ligne et vous avez une question, utilisez la fonction levez la main pour nous faire part de votre question. Dylan, go ahead. Uh, hi there. It's my first time with this head. So please give me a thumbs up if, I, if you can hear me. It's cutting on and off, but uh, it's, try your question anyway. Sure. Sorry about that. I just wanted to know what you think Canada could be doing beyond what we've already been doing for tech people. Uh, sorry, we didn't get the questioner. With Sure. And who is this from? Uh, okay. Um, so, so thank you, Dylan. Um, let me just give you my perspective, and I'll share, uh, and I'll ask the panelists to to uh, add. Um, I mean, Canada uh, has been a leader. Uh, the Prime Minister himself has been personally leading um, the calls for accountability um, for for since since our tenure in uh, 2015. Uh, recently, as you know, uh, this January, Canada sanctioned four Sri Lankan officials, including two former presidents, uh, Gotabaya and Mahinda Rajapaksha. Uh, we have been very strong at the United Nations Human Rights Council as part of the core group uh, seeking accountability on the island. Um, very recently, uh, as of uh, May 18, 2022, the Canadian Parliament declared what happened on the island to Tamils as genocide. Um, and uh, during the discussions around the IMF bailout last year, uh, Canada played an integral role, including uh, Mr. Freeland, uh, in ensuring that um, uh, human rights uh, conditionalities were uh, part of the discussion and on the table uh, as Sri Lanka got a bailout. Obviously, there's much more that needs to happen, uh, including uh, work with uh, international, um, uh, um, international Criminal Court as well as other international legal mechanisms to ensure that those who perpetrated uh, the violence are held to account. Um, and as a parliamentarian, I can assure you that, that I will work with uh, the Tamil diaspora as well as the NGOs and, and uh, other governments uh, to ensure that there is long-term uh, accountability for what's happened. And I'll invite uh, my panelists to, uh, to add if they wish. Do you have another question, Dylan? Sure. Um uh, I guess I'm just wondering why we haven't brought Sri Lanka to the ICC. Uh, if, if, you know, if, if you might be able to speak to what kind of response you've gotten from Cabinet when you raise that, because you know, I, I see the petition here. I think you've got response to that petition before. It seems like we're not moving on this. Is it because we just don't have the evidence for the ICC, or is this actually off the table for the government? The complication with the ICC um, is that uh, Sri Lanka is not party to the Rome Statute. As, as, you, as you're aware, uh, ICC does not have uh, jurisdiction uh, to bring this matter forth. There are two, uh, what I believe are novel submissions to the ICC that are now uh, being looked at. Um, and, and I think uh, we're at a very early stage uh, of this discussion. But certainly, um, at, it, at the face value, it is not that simple to bring forward a case uh, through to the ICC. I think um, the, the mechanism that is more likely at the, the, at the immediate stage is what the UN Human Rights uh, Commissioner is tasked to do, which is to report back to Council uh, on uh, the options for further accountability on Sri Lanka. So just to take you back, um, in 2015, the Office of the High Commission for Human Rights in our report at that time declared what happened um, on the island as uh, war crimes and crimes against humanity. Uh, the further investigation that she's, um, or he's tasked to do right now um, is to um, assess the evidence further uh, and, and gather additional evidence and then come back for uh, with recommendations as to what that looks like. So it could be a range of measures, including, as uh, Sarika was talking about, an international independent mechanism, uh, which which uh, has been used by the Human Rights Council on a number of occasions. Um, and, and there are other um, available avenues outside of the ICJ or the ICC that I think are um, really on the table as the report from the High Commissioner comes forward. Is that all for questions, Dylan? Uh, yes, thank you. 
All right. Thank you.